let's first talk just purely from a technical viewpoint. Bill Maloney, what are you seeing in the charts? Charts are very positive on Comcast. Shares were locked in this trading range going back to 2011. They broke out in early 2012 and basically have been this uptrend ever since. Trade above the 50-day moving average, the 200-day moving average, as well as the short-term 10- and 20-day moving averages. And the stock held the 100-day moving average on any pullbacks in this uptrend line. So overall, charts are very positive at Comcast. Charts are looking really good. Uh, Amy Young is joining us right now. She has an outperform rating on the stock. She's a big fan of Comcast. Why do you think, Amy, this deal works for them? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that Comcast is a long-term structural winner within cable. Um, it's, you know, I think the acquisition makes us a strategically complete asset. And then I think over time, the stock gets re-rated, and the company is already re re kind of reclassifying itself as a media technology company. Yeah, I mean, is that the truth? These, these cable companies need to effectively become content media companies because, you know, let's face it, a lot of this content may not be delivered in the next 10, 20, 50 years through the cable box anymore. Yeah, I agree. I, I would agree with that. I mean, I, I definitely think that the company sees this as completing its vision and now has content. It's the biggest distributor in the U.S., so it definitely completes kind of their, their vision for how they, they view the landscape longer term. What did you think of the price? Bob Nardelli was on uh, with me yesterday and said, you know what, I think they got a heck of a deal. Do you agree? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think initially people were thinking that the EV of NBC would be 45. So at, the f at first glance, uh, paying nine times definitely seems very fair, uh, and if not, a very attractive price. All right, Dan Deming, you're looking at this in the options market. Yeah, um, it, it, how do you think, how are you positioning yourself, I'll, yeah. I'll say? I mean, it's Animal Kingdom Day, I guess, here at the CBOE, because we're going to talk about a call <laughs> condor today. Uh, basically, you know, if you look at the options activity in Comcast, you look at those uh, leaps or longer term options, like the January 2014, January 2015 options, there's a fair amount of activity, and it looks like they're positioning for the upside. So what I did is kind of structure a trade to kind of take advantage of this trend. I think it's going to continue into the end of the year, but I don't want to risk a lot of money, and I want to limit my downside. So I looked at what they call a call condor in January 2014, buying the 40 calls and buying the double calls. Selling the 45 calls and the 50 calls, you do that whole package for about $1.60, gives you a nice range, break evens between 41.60 and 53.40 on the upside. And anywhere in between there is a nice uh, delivery of about anywhere between 45 and 50, you get $3.40 on your $1.60 investment. Amy, what could throw Comcast a curveball? Um, I mean, if advertising trends don't continue to, if there's no recovery in advertising trends or if they don't turn around the, the broadcast side, um, but I don't really see that as being a huge curveball for the company. Mm -hmm. or, or is that because you just don't see it happening? You're seeing the economy on an upswing and ad revenue will follow? It definitely seems like it from all the media companies that are reporting, ad trends seem to be pretty resilient. So, yeah, I don't think that's a huge curveball for, for the company. 